Orleans. 73,000 frenzied revelers are set for a night of trick or treat. And what a treat. The Pittsburgh Steelers face the reigning Super Bowl champion Saints on NBC's Sunday Night Football. Chris Commonsworth, Andrea Kramer, welcome to New Orleans. It's going to be a great sideshow tonight and a great main event as well. The Saints come in with a mark of four and three. This is a team coming off a loss to Cleveland here last week. Drew Brees threw four interceptions. Still minus Reggie Bush. He'll miss a sixth consecutive game. In a word, every Saint tells you we have just been inconsistent as they try to recapture some of last season's magic. Now, Pittsburgh has been consistent. Ben Roethlisberger was suspended for the first four games. They almost ran the table. Wound up three and one. He's come back, led them to two wins. They look good on offense. They look great on defense. They've given up the fewest points in the National Football League. And right now, a lot of folks think that the Pittsburgh Steelers could be the best team in the AFC and maybe in the National Football League. So, Chris Collinsworth, nice outfit, by the way. Good Thank costume. You very much. The Pittsburgh Steelers, where do you rank them right now? You know, they just look like the best to me right now. I mean, defensively, you talked about it. They're really second to none at this point. They can run the football well enough. They proved they could win without Ben Roethlisberger. And since he's come back, he's looked tremendous. So at least until this one's played tonight, I like the Pittsburgh Steelers. They try to get the 6-1. and one. The Saints try to get the 5-3. and three. Minus Reggie Bush. Minus Pierre Thomas, their other running back. Minus two starting cornerbacks. So they play with a shorter deck tonight. How are they going to beat Pittsburgh? Well, I can't really create a scenario in my mind where I think the Saints are going to be able to run the football against the Steelers. Really, nobody else has either. So that means you put the ball in the hands of Drew Brees and you cut it loose. So you get a great quarterback against a great defense, a few ghosts, a few goblins. Happy Halloween, everybody. It'll be crazy tonight. Anything can happen. And the game should be terrific as well. Super Bowl champions from two years ago, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Super Bowl champions from last season, the New Orleans Saints on Sunday Night Football. Sunday Night Football is brought to you by Hyundai, maker of the 2010 Genesis, the vehicle that does everything better. By DirecTV, if you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. And by Subway Restaurants, enjoy $5 footlong subs morning, noon, and night. Spanish audio provided by Telemundo. NBC Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Mike Tomlin in the middle of his fourth season as the Steelers head coach. A regular season mark of 36 and 18. Moments to go down on the field with Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Thank you very much, Al. Tonight is Ben Roethlisberger's third start after missing the first month of the season. The thing that I've been excited about, he's gotten better within each game, and I expect him to do the same tonight. The atmosphere here at the Dome is always crazy, but especially tonight. How do you expect your team to handle it? You know, we better handle it like a developing world champion. Uh, that's what comes with being with what we're trying to be, and uh, we're faced with a stiff test tonight, uh, but we got a bunch of competitors. Hopefully, we're up to the challenge. All right, Coach, thanks very much. Thank appreciate you. it. Steelers top ranked defense will have linebacker Lamar Wood that is producing the hamstring, but are without their starting defensive ends, Aaron Smith and Brett Kiesel. As for the Saints, they are without their starting quarterbacks, Jamari and Tracy Porter. Linebacker Scott Chandler returns after missing the last two games with a hamstring injury. And those are, thank you, Andrew, some significant injuries on both sides. Sean Payton at the age of 46, facing the 38-year-old Tomlin. Came here in 2006 post Katrina, and you know the rest of the story. There's a party in New Orleans. What a shock. Garrett Hartley to kick off. Pittsburgh won the toss, elected to receive Emmanuel Sanders, a rookie out of SMU, who fumbled the opening kickoff last week in Miami, but then had two subsequent real good runbacks. 
to set up several points and this one will go out of bounds but not until it gets to the end zone. So it'll be a touchback and Adam will come to the 20 yard line as we take a look at the Pittsburgh starters. Ben Roethlisberger, Corey Ross in Ohio. Richard Mendenhall, Illinois. David Johnson, Arkansas State. Hans Ward, Georgia. Mike Wiley, O'Pair Walter High School. Heath Miller, Virginia. Max Starks, Florida Gators. Chris Kimoyatu, Utah. Marquise Pouncey, Florida. Trey Essex, Northwestern. Flozo Adams, Michigan State. We'll be spotlighting that Pouncey from time to time tonight. A rookie out of Florida, number one pick. Who figures to be another in a long line of great Pittsburgh centers. And Roethlisberger off the play fake hits Mendenhall, and that's a gain of nine yards. And Pouncey threw a nice block. With Roethlisberger, most of you know the story. Suspended for four games. Originally, it was going to be six games. So he had to miss their start where they were three and one. Then came the bye week. Then he got back into action home against Cleveland. And last week against Miami involved in that controversial play where he fumbled at the goal line near the end of the game. The officials could not determine who recovered, so Pittsburgh kept the ball, kicked the field goal, and beat the Dolphins. Second down and one out of a tight formation. Mendenhall can cut it back over the right side and picks up a first down after the 33 yard line. Here are the Saints defensive starters. Alex Brown, the Gator Nation. Remy Adele, South Grand Perry High. Cedric Gillis, USC. Will Smith, the Ohio State. Danny Clark, Illinois. Jonathan Vilma, the U. Scott Shanley, Nebraska. Pat Robinson, Florida State. Darren Sharper, William and Mary. Roman Harper, Alabama. Malcolm Jenkins, the Ohio State University. And Pat Robinson just limped off the field, the rookie corner. Here is Ward trying to get a block, and that's a great play made by Roman Harper to fight off the block and stop him in his tracks after a very short game. Now there's a lot of different things going on out here now because so many injuries, and you see Malcolm Jenkins right there in your picture. He's now having to play corner because of some injuries to their starters, Tracy Porter and Randall Gay. Patrick Robinson, who is supposed to be covering Mike Wallace, the speed receiver for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So don't be surprised if they start coming after Lee Torrance early, his replacement. Torrance 24 was lined up against Sanders. Here goes Mendenhall around the right side again. And Richard takes it up to the 37 yard line off a Sanders block. It'll be third down and five. That was a big block by Sanders. Watch this crack back. He is officially a Pittsburgh Steeler now. Whack on a defensive end, Alex Brown. That's pretty good. Third and five from the 38 yard line. Noeldi Moore is the back. He's their third down back, number 21. Ward stays in the block and that pass is incomplete. Trying to get it to Moore. Alex Brown put the pressure on that time and it will be fourth down. Well, Noeldi Moore has become their third down back and you'll see him right here. Really never looked back for the football. Scott Shanley had him in coverage and I just don't think that he knew that he was hot on that play. Early pressure on Ben. He had to get rid of it. Daniel Sepulveda, the Steelers left footed kicker in his fourth season. Lance Moore. Number three wide out for the Saints is back to receive the kick and he calls for a fair catch and makes it at the 25 yard line and that is where the New Orleans Saints will take over on Halloween night when we come back. Sunday Night Football brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Toyota and the Tiny Football League. Add your Pee Wee team. By Samsung. The apps you want most now on your TV. And by Papa John's. You can order a pizza online at papajohns.com. Halloween parade. Winding its way through downtown last night. That's... <laughs> That's original. <laughs> Appropriate, too. Boy, Fred got like eight stitches in his chin. Yeah. Today. Very topical. <laughs> Saints' first play of the night from the 25-yard line is a quick flip to the left side. It's caught there by Robert Meech 
pressure gain of three. Here are the Saints starters. Drew Brees, Purdue Boilermaker. Chris Ivan, Tiffany. Keith Evans, Auburn. Marcus Colston, Hofstra University. Deborah Henderson, LSU. Jeremy Shockey, University of Miami. Jamon Bushrod, Towson University. Carl Nix, North Salinas High. Jonathan Goodwin, Lower Richland High, Diamond. Jari Evans, Frankfurt Pioneers. John Stinchcomb, University of Georgia. And on second down, the flip goes to Julius Jones who is their number two running back right now, the former Cowboy and former Seahawk, and that is a gain of 11 and a first down for the Saints. Well, I tell you what, for Julius Jones, you make Troy Polamalu miss in the open field, you've done something significant. Polamalu had him measured up, and Jones just made that move. That's They've been looking for somebody, anybody out here, to do some of the things that Reggie Bush used to do before his injury. That was a good start. At one time, Julius Jones looked like he was a budding superstar when he first came to Dallas and Bill Parcells was there. Older brother Thomas has had a pretty good career as well. First and ten. And that pass is incomplete as Breeze tried to check it down on the left side. It will be second down. Lawrence Timmons put the heat on the Super Bowl MVP. Well, last week the Cleveland Browns had a lot of success with this amoeba looking defense. Look at all these guys. Not one guy with his hand on the ground, just up, moving around, trying to confuse Drew Breeze. And it worked again, at least thus far, for the Pittsburgh Steelers here. Something they don't do a lot of. But uh, this is a copycat league, and if it worked for the Browns, why not? And for Pittsburgh, of course, minus those two defensive ends, the great Smith and Kiesel, giving them a, a different look defensively under Dick LeBeau. That pass is caught by Moore. Out of the flat. McFadden makes the tackle, and here is the Steeler defense. Ricky Hood, Missouri. Casey Hampton, Texas. Nick Eason, Clemson University. Lamar Woodley, University of Michigan. James Ferrier, Virginia. Lawrence Timmons, Florida State. James Harrison, Kent State. Brian McFadden, Florida State. Ryan Clark, LSU. Troy Polamalu, University of Southern California. IT Square University. Leave it to Ike Taylor to put that coda on it. Swaggin'. Third and eight from the 43 yard line. And Reeves throwing and the pass was right there and simply dropped. Bullseye to Marcus Colston and he drops it fourth down. They got a little shot on the tail end of it from Troy Polamalu too. And watch Polamalu back here. He sees Drew Brees' eyes all the way. Look at him. He's looking at Brees. He's going to come up and make the break. There was William Gay in front of it. But that's going to be a game tonight between those two. Polamalu follows quarterback's eyes as well as anybody. And Drew Brees, an expert at looking defenses off. Really might, have, might have gotten a fingertip on it. Antoine Randall is back to accept this nice kick off the foot of Thomas Morstead. And that's where Pittsburgh will take over with 10-16 to go in a scoreless first quarter of the Superdome. Tomorrow night, a Saturday night live special. Four decades of TV's funniest women. The women of SNL tomorrow night at 9 Eastern Pacific 8 Central and Mountain right here on NBC. From the 11, both Mendenhall and Isaac Redman, 33, are in the backfield, and they're going to give the ball to Redman, and Redman's going to pick up a first down and gain 15 yards. First-year guy out of Bowie State, and a guy who's been their short yardage guy to this point this season. They like him. Mendenhall is number one. Moeldy Moore is their third down back, but Redman sees quite a bit of action. Yeah, nice run by Redmond, but he's going to get a help from an old friend here in Heinz Ward. This guy, not only one of the leading receivers in the National Football League, he always finds a way to make those blocks on the edge. Big reason why I think one day he'll be in the Hall of Fame. From the 26 on first down with the empty backfield. Got done, so we go in a five receiver set. And Roethlisberger's pass is incomplete through it to the outside. And running straight up the field was Antoine Randall L., who played four years with Pittsburgh, then went to Washington for four and was brought back. Well, it's going to be a night where Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, is going to have to be creative. He has a lot of starting cornerbacks out. Randall Gay's been gone for the year. Tracy Porter, the Super Bowl hero, Jabari Greer. 
He's taking safeties, playing in the corner. He's got all kinds of issues in the secondary, but he will not stop blitzing, trust me. Second and ten, and again they go with Mendenhall and Redmond in the backfield. Redmond the fullback. And he'll do the blocking, but not efficiently enough as Mendenhall gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Will Smith and Jonathan Vilma are right there. It'll be third down and 11 for Pittsburgh. Well, the Saints really feel like they struck gold with Malcolm Jenkins. Here's a guy that's a safety that's flipped over on the outside. He's right back here and is now playing the cornerback position. He can run up, come up and fill on the running plays like that. He has just been invaluable in this year of the injury in the secondary. Third and 11. Roethlisberger is going to take a timeout. Crowd is full throw with 844 left. First quarter. No score. Log on NBCSports.com slash SNF Extra. Among the things tonight, the extras we have for you, costume cam. And check that one out. And check out probably 90% of the 70,000 people here in uniform. Third and 11 after the Pittsburgh timeout. Here comes the blitz. Roethlisberger gets jostled and taken down. And as is so often the case with Ben, he can hang in there. He can absorb a tremendous amount of contact. A lot of times he's able to escape, but not this time. Well, Greg Williams is always going to blitz. Look at all the guys. They're going to come from everywhere here. And the reason they do that is they want to sit out here. They know you've got to throw it hot. So they just jump the routes, and even if you get a completion, it's going to be for seven yards. That is probably 90% with the Saints that they're going to blitz in that situation. Pearson Prelo figures to get at least a half a sack on that. He started to get him down. Oh. And Sepulveda with a flag thrown at the 47-yard line. And the flag thrown against Sylvester Stevenson, number 55, with the whack job at the 41. Pete Morelli is the referee tonight. It's the first time we'll, we'll hear from him. It's a little intense out here tonight, isn't it? I mean, there's been some hitting. There's been some. This has been good. There are fouls on both teams. Holding. Number 56 of the receiving team. The illegal man going out of bounds. Number 37 of the kicking team. By rule, the penalties will offset. Fourth down. And it was... Uh, Sylvester I called him uh, well I had him as Sylvester comma Stevenson his first name is Stevenson uh, that may be Lance Moore may think that's his name now after that hit. <laughs> right. he's, got, he's got to go back out there and do it again that's the worst part you take a shot like that now you got to go line up and catch another one my name is Moore Lance yeah he just got lanced. I tell you, that Lance Moore right there, though, has been invaluable with Reggie Bush out. He has become the man to man beater in this offense. And Sepulveda again. It's a line drive kick. And Moore will collect it at the 33. Try to find room and does. And gets spilled up at the 49 yard line. Then the ball is loose. But the field judge comes in, and you can see the line judge as well, both signaling he was down. Yeah, I, End of play, yeah, the 49. I, didn't you think that he, when he landed sort of head first, that's when the ball came out? Remember, the top of your helmet is the same as your knee going down. So let's take a look here. These Elbow, days, you forearm. never know. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, the elbow. That forearm, elbow, all that stuff, that's down. And now the Saints will start this drive from the 49. The first drive was five plays and all five passes. And now you've got Tomlin throwing the flag. And Tomlin is a guy who very infrequently and Pittsburgh judiciously. Challenging the ruling on the field. The ball was fumbled and recovered by one of their members of their team. Mike toward the bottom of the league in terms of challenges, but he thinks he has a chance to win this one. We'll see.
Mike Tomlin challenges fewer than four plays a year only 17 in his three and a half seasons. We think this will stand because watch the elbow. The elbow is down. So is the forearm. End of play. Ball and comes loose. After revealing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was down by contact. Pittsburgh will be charged for timeout and a challenge. All right, so Tomlin now down to his last challenge, and Roethlisberger had already taken a timeout offensively, so Pittsburgh has only won the rest of the half. But it won't matter because he won't challenge for another year and a half now at this point. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> You're right. So now the Saints and Liddell Betts, the longtime Redskin, is the running back here. They fake it to him. Pressure is put on. The pass has gotten away to David Thomas. The number two tight end, and he picks up uh, about nine and a half. Take a look at the uh, the Pittsburgh, the new guys up front of the new starters. Anyway, you've got Ziggy Hood, 96, second year man out of Missouri, n number one pick last year, and then Nick Eason, veteran, eighth year out of Clemson. And there, they're the guys who have to fill in for Aaron Smith, who's gone for most of the season, though he's not on IR. And Brett Kiesel, who they hope to have back very shortly. Ivory is now the back, and again, it's been all passing for the Saints. And that pass is caught outside by Thomas, and Thomas, who needed only a half a yard, doesn't get it. Lamar Woodley stops him short. It'll be third down. Well, one of the things the Saints want to do in this ball game is bring in an, uh, an extra offensive lineman in Zach Street. They want to discourage the Pittsburgh Steelers as much as possible from blitzing them out here. So basically what the Steelers have responded with is just a three man rush and then dropping eight back in coverage. And they are going to measure needed about a half yard looked like he was stopped shy. Then in comes the chain gang with 702 to play in the quarter. Every play by New Orleans has been a pass. And now it's third down in about six lengths. I tell you, how you talked about those defensive ends, and nobody else really does. But Aaron Smith and Brett Kiesel and Casey Hampton, to me, have really been the cornerstone of Dick LeBeau's defense. There's no, when you talk to Dick LeBeau about his football team, the first name that always comes out of his mouth is Aaron Smith. Every single time. Here's a guy that takes on two 300 pounders time after time. His linebackers can run around and make plays. There's Brett Kiesel who plays on the other side. Those guys never go to Pro Bowls. They don't get a lot of sacks, but they are the cornerstone and have been for, seems like forever, this Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Dick LeBeau went into the Hall of Fame in Canton in August. How good does he look for 73? And this is their first running play, and they give it to Chris Ivory, and he's going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage, and it's all about forward progress. James Farrier is there. Ike Taylor came up for support. And they're going to mark it a little short of the first down again, fourth down. I'll tell you what, for a 35-year-old linebacker, that's about as fast a fill as I have seen in a while. James Ferrier was like he was shot out of a cannon on that one. There he goes right here. Watch this. Cold. Stopped him cold. Second oldest linebacker in the league through Jason Taylor. And the Saints are going to line up to go for it on fourth and one. And indeed they do. And they get the first down. Chris Ivory over right guard. Tackled by Polamalo to move the chains. Well, maybe the first thing that we've seen so far. Ziggy Hood working against Jari Evans right here. And he's just going to take him right out of the hole. Pretty nice job by Jonathan Stinchcomb as well. Polamalo tried to get over the top but just unable to get there, got caught up in the wash of Evans' block. Now at the 36-yard line. Running back is Jones, and Julius Jones to the outside, and knifing in is Lawrence Timmons. He was their number one pick out of Florida State in 07. I'll tell you something that was stunning for me. We had a chance to talk to Keith Butler, the linebacker coach of the Steelers on the field before the game, and I certainly think Lawrence Timmons has been playing great. There's no question this has been his best year, his healthiest year, but it was the comment that Butler made to me that he felt like that Lawrence Timmons is the best linebacker on his team. Now that's a little stunning right there when you consider these other three guys that are out there playing. You look at 
that four is a group and on second and one. Lance Moore makes the catch. I mean, among those linebackers, of course, is James Harrison, who was the defensive player right. of the year in 2008 and made, for my money, the most amazing defensive play in the history of the Super Bowl. You've got Lamar Woodley, Farrier. Well, you know, it's like Penn State and Pittsburgh. Linebacker you and the pro version. A lot of linebackers at that state. Third and five. And that's batted. Batted down by James Farrier. So you start talking about the linebackers and they say, well, we'll make you look good. No kibosh. And now. With Paul Amalo, you got to. Yeah, to Julius Jones did not like this at the right. end of this play. It comes out, and then he gets his knees taken out from underneath him. I think he reached down and might have even grabbed a little hair on the back of Paul Amalo. Easy to do. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Number 21 of the offense. Taking a swing at a player and missing 15-yard penalty. Fourth down. There was an initial reaction by both players, and then it kind of, there we go, he pulled the grab back of his jersey there, and Polamalu was smart enough to get up. He made his comment, but he went in and took the 15-yard penalty, and it was substantial. So that's going to make it fourth down and 20. If there's ever a time when it's not terrible, it's probably this because it gives Morstead a little bit more room to work with. I don't think they were going to try a field goal. Because the field goal would have been about 54 yards. So it gives Morstead a little bit more space. Antoine Randall L. drops back at the 11 yard line. Olamalo has a way of setting the tone, doesn't he? Ball for the fair catch. And along with some company makes it at the 10 yard line. 404 to go. Opening quarter. Nothing, nothing. So the Steelers start the season. Roethlisberger suspended for four games. So you have Dennis Dixon making two starts. He gets hurt. He's gone for the year. The veteran Charlie Batch made two starts. And now you have Roethlisberger. They also brought Byron Leftwich in at the beginning of the season. He got hurt, but he's back right now on the bench. And there they are, the teams to start five and one, three different quarterbacks, and you have three of them. And the Chargers in 87, that was part of the replacement situation. So that deserves an asterisk. Moeldy Moore is the back on his first down play from the 10 yard line. And they give it to Moore, and he cuts back over the left guard. And Moeldy Moore with some good, tough running for a gain of 18, and a little pushy shovey at the end of the play. Well, Eldie Moore, who played his college football right here at Tulane. One of the great draft picks, I think, in the draft this year, center Marquise Pouncey. Watch him get up on the linebacker here, cut off the backside of Scott Shanley, and really open up that hole. His ability to move his feet and to get up on that second level has sort of reinvigorated this Steelers running game. Pouncey, who was snapping the ball for Tim Tebow last year, Puts it in Roethlisberger's hands, and that's Ward to the 29-yard line. Now, with Roethlisberger, he was suspended for originally six games, violated the league's personal conduct policy, had an incident in Lake Tahoe at a golf tournament in 08, had one in Georgia last spring, and Roger Goodell put him down for six games with the possibility it would only be four. He did the things he was supposed to do. He went in to meet the commissioner, and they knocked it down from six to four. Will he turn his life around? We'll see. Second to nine. And this is more. And, you know, you can be swayed by guys and, and all of that. We've known him a long time. He came in yesterday. We met with him. You know, he's saying all the right stuff. He I, just hope he does the right stuff. He is, and he said, you know, I've changed, but I changed back to what I was originally in post for the Big Ben days, I hope are completely different than what we've seen in the past. I, everybody says he's different, and that's a good thing. Seeing some of the people you hang around with, that helps. Third and eight from the 30-yard line. 
Play clock down to two. Pressure over the middle. Underthrown. He had to get rid of it in a hurry. Underthrows Ward. Roman Harper covering on the play. Fourth down. Well, the hot reads just are not working right now. Heinz Ward is typically the designated hot read, and Ben Roethlisberger can't hold it as long as these receivers are running up and down the field. You know, he's sitting there with somebody in his face, and the receivers are not turning and looking. That's the Paul that is kick. Fair caught at the 18-yard line by Moore. 51 left in a scoreless opening period. You ever been here on New Year's Eve? No. This is, <laughs> it's been something. We were walking the streets a little bit last night. Oh, baby. They've done a few sugar bowls. I guess it's the end of whatever month it is, October, December. I don't think it matters really? what month it is. No, you're right. And first down, that pass is incomplete. Marcus Colston never had possession of it. Coverage by Brian. McFadden second down. You know you don't get that many chances against these defenses. You have to make that kind of a play. Both these teams so far are all 0 for 3 on third down. There's been one fourth down conversion by the Saints, but defense is designated is dominating out here. And there's Colston with right his hands. Breeze six out of ten to 35 yards. A lot of short throws. Chris Ivory to the 20 and he's been the workhorse now with Reggie Bush out and with Pierre Thomas out six games missed now by Bush and this is the fifth in a row for Thomas. I'll tell you that time Ziggy Hood was good. He's right here. He's going to occupy blockers. He's going to allow Timmons to come around. Look he's going to maintain that gap squeeze it. Here comes Timmons. That's what an Aaron Smith would do in there. That's a nice play. And there is Reggie Bush. They thought as the week began he might be ready for tonight. Then they said no. They've got Carolina next week and a bye, so he not, may not be back for a couple of weeks. Third and eight. Just a three man rush. Eight back. Pass caught, but it's not going to be a first down. Stopped at the 27 yard line is Jeremy Shockey. And with under a minute to go in the quarter, it's going to be fourth and one. You know, it's really been interesting. One of the best pass rushers in the league is right here, James Harrison. And yet, for the most part tonight, because they've had some help and protection on that side, they are just dropping him back. And now he's just making plays as a pass defender. So you want to come over there? You want to help against him? I'll drop back and make a play. Third punt from Morstead. You got Emmanuel Sanders, the rookie, who's going to collect it at the 19 yard line. A pass to 30 and a great one back to Sanders who gets taken down from behind, but not before he crosses the 50 and he's taken down at the same 45 yard line. Great run back right there for Sanders, able to sprint away, and he's finally taken down by Courtney Roby. And they think the sky is the limit for this young man, Emmanuel Sanders. He's in a battle every week in camp with Antonio Brown to see who gets to dress for the game. A former defensive back, only been playing receiver about a year and a half. They love his toughness. I think he's going to be a good one. 54 yard punt, 38 yard return, and wearing Lynn Swan. Old number 88. You better be good, yeah. From the 44 yard line. Big to Mendenhall. And Roethlisberger will swing it out, checked it down, and got, got a nine yard gain to David Johnson on the play, and that'll take us to the second quarter. End of one on Halloween. Pittsburgh, nothing. New Orleans, nothing. NBC Sunday Night Football back after these messages. Aerial coverage tonight brought to you by Geico. You go down to the Superdome and also the New Orleans Arena where the Hornets play basketball. 
Al Michaels, Chris Collinsworth, Andrea Kramer, Sunday Night Football. Second and one. Pittsburgh at the Saints 35 yard line. And that'll be a first down for Mendenhall, taking it to the 31 yard line. And one guy that the Saints will have to watch all night long, Mike Wallace, the emerging wide receiver, and as fast as anybody in the league. Yeah, Joe Vitt, the Saints linebacker coach, who's been around here since 2006. They started the week showing plays of Mike Wallace and comparing him to guys like Cliff Branch, the old speedster for the Raiders, Randy Moss, saying this guy may be faster than any of those guys, and they started their game plan around him. Wallace went to Ole Miss, but threw up here in New Orleans. Mendenhall to the 25-yard line. So, of course, you know you have Heinz Ward, but then when you have Mike Wallace as well, since last season, nine receptions of more than 40 yards from the line of scrimmage, most in the league. Look at those numbers, yeah. though. Led the NFL a season ago, almost 20 yards a catch, and they go, well, you know, nobody knew who he was. He surprised guys. <laughs> now he's averaging 25 yards a catch. Right, a quarter of the field. Second down and four from the 25-yard line. Through the middle to the 18 yard line. Another first down for the Steelers. Well, a couple of guys here to watch on this one. You've got Pouncey here, but you also have right here big Flozell Adams moving over to right tackle. Look at that nice block, turning right out of there, opening up a big gap. Flozell may not be as quick as he once was in pass protection, but you get him going downhill, he's a big, strong man. Flip it out to Mendenhall. Richard will take the ball to the 13 yard line. Shanley and Torrance converge on the stop gain of five. Yeah, Jonathan Vilma is one of those guys, the middle linebacker for the New Orleans Saints, that has just been the quarterback of this defense for so long. You, in the Super Bowl against Peyton Manning, he was matching call for call with Peyton out there. And he said he's really looking forward to going against Ben Roethlisberger in this one. Something he hasn't done as a Saint. These two teams meet about every four years. Second and five. Yeah, that's Vilma stopping Mendenhall. And of course, we asked Roethlisberger about the matchup in reverse going against Jonathan Vilma, and he said, you know, I've got a matchup I have a couple of times a year against a guy named Ray Lewis that's <laughs> pretty interesting as well. So he's no stranger to that kind of confrontation. Third down four. Steps up, throws, caught, and that's a touchdown. Antoine Randall L. Man felt the pressure, steps up toward the line of scrimmage, and Randall L., the once and current Steeler, after four years in Washington, back and back into the end zone. Watch Randall L. right there. He basically is just setting up a pick, gets knocked down. The defense all falls inside on Milwaukee Moore. And we'll see whether he gets in or not. Close. Mm, 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 mm. Any part of the ball hits the front of the goal line. It didn't look like it to me. It didn't look like it to me either. It would be a first down and goal if Peyton wants to challenge. And he will challenge. New Orleans is challenging on the ruling on the field that the receiver did not break the play of the goal line. So the good news is he wins. The bad news is <laughs> if he wins, it's first down and an inch for a touchdown. <laughs> Pete Morelli is ready with this call. Touchdown or no After touchdown. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed that the runner was short and did not score. The ball will be placed on the six-inch line, and New Orleans will not be charged with timeout. 
That's well, a, it, it should be overturned. He said confirmed. Yeah, no, but, he's, but that's significant, though. If in his mind he thought it was placed on the one, it's completely different call. Because now, if you think that this is a touchdown, you have to overturn it and have conclusive evidence to overturn it. So that is significant, significant that little difference. Well, I, I think he misspoke there because he, the, field, the, the ruling on the field was a touchdown. That's my point, though. Right. And it's not a touchdown. But he may have thought there wasn't enough evidence to overturn it to make it a touchdown. Where in reality, there may not have been enough evidence to overturn the fact that it wasn't. You know what I mean? Because he had it flipped in his mind. It's overturned. It's first and goal. So again, it's the good news, bad news. The bad news is first down at about two inches for a touchdown. And they give the ball to the fullback, and that's Isaac Redman, and now all of a sudden, two inches becomes about a yard. Second down. What is it with Pittsburgh and goal line plays? Yeah, one of the great defensive players on this Saints team right here, Will Smith. Watch him slam hard down inside. There's no reason to do anything but take a chance in this situation. And then it was Ellis on the other side who came through and made the tackle. So now second down and goal from the one. Mendon Hall. And he will twist. And he is stopped short of the goal line. So we're back to about the three inch line. And that's Jonathan Builder right there, third down and goal. Well, that was close too, but I think his backside hit before he rolled over. Let's take a look here. The contact was made. Boy, that's a close oh, baby. Just a matter of when his backside hit the ground, which is right there before <laughs> the elbow hit down. Well, no challenge from Tomlin. Third and goal. Again, it's Menden Hall, and he's not going to get there. Jeff Charleston, number 97, saves a touchdown. And now what does Pittsburgh do? I tell you what, I couldn't see exactly who it was, but on the end of the line of scrimmage right here, taking out the lead blocker is really what ends up making that play. And we talk about the challenge. What a challenge that was now, huh? Had to protect about one inch of turf, and they did it. And in comes the field goal unit, so instead of a touchdown, it'll be a chip shot 19-yard field goal for Jeff Reed. Dan Sepulveda will hold, and the Steelers take the lead, but that's a, a victory on that drive for the Saints. Great challenge. It works. It saves them four points. 3 nothing Pittsburgh. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Dish Network. Let's watch TV on Nissan. Innovation for today, innovation for tomorrow, innovation for all. By Windows 7 and by the new Coors Light Silver Bullet Aluminum Pint. the opening on camera who dropped that up on us I didn't know who was crawling up behind us I thought it was one of those guys yep. you never know Courtney Roby to run back the kick Sean Payton came here in 06 post Katrina and we all know what's happened since then but since then they're third in the NFL in points per game First in yards per game, third in red zone. Of course, uh, he has the offensive pedigree. Dick LeBeau, since 04, his second tour as the defensive coordinator, first in points allowed as they are this year. And you can see some of the other rankings as well. First in yards, first in sacks. And this year, of course, it's been that defense that's cemented this team and has been the major factor in a 5 and 1 opening salvo of the season. Chris Ivory. Out to the 30 yard line for a gain of four. Chris Ivory, as you look at the two coaches again, you know, LeBeau, it's a great thing with him going into the Hall of Fame. We were talking to Mike Tomlin last night. Said 
Does Dick ever talk about retiring? He said, absolutely not. Every day is a great day. Well, James Harrison said, thank God he didn't start crying at the Hall of Fame speech, or he might have had 60 tough guys crying right after him. Second and seven. A big defensive back on his playing days, and that pass is caught out of the flat, and Polamalu is right there to make sure Meacham does not escape. Third down. It's like Usain Bolt in the start of the 100 meters when Polamalu decides to go, he goes. And so do you. I mean, that is, what, a couple of yard gain when he was standing seven or eight yards behind the line of scrimmage and maybe 20 yards away. Probably one of the great hustlers in the NFL. We know about him as a hitter, but the guy is just relentless. He never stops pursuing the football. Can't miss him. Great fun to watch. 36 from the 30. Breeze has time. And makes that pay off. And before Polamalu can get there, Marcus Colson makes the catch for a first down. Well, you can see the little gamesmanship going on with Drew Brees and Troy Polamalu. Brees trying to freeze Polamalu just a bit, just enough to get that ball in out there. He wants him to think there's still the possibility of something coming down the middle. And Brees is actually even saying that we may show him some things that he thinks he knows because he likes to guess and then maybe be able to do a little double move off of it. From the 43. Off the fake. Look out from behind. He gets it away and then it's dropped out in the flat. That was Heath Evans. And James Harrison came in from the back. And that's a scary thought. Yeah, speaking of scary, that was the old lookout block right there. You as a an offensive lineman, you start screaming, look out, here he comes. Harrison just had a moment to get around here on Bushrod. They had to help the chip, and it was just as he released that football. But those are hits that the quarterbacks remember. Outside the pocket, you do get a little more latitude on that extra step to hit the quarterback, too. And you know, Harris is the guy who got fined $75,000 for the hit in the Cleveland game two weeks ago. Breeze sets up the screen, and that will go nowhere. Jones gets taken down by Lamar Woodley. Yeah, so you see enough of James Harrison, so you go over to the other guy, and uh, there's Lamar Woodley sitting on the outside right there. And that guy is a monster. I, I tell you, when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers on tape, it's almost like they have five defensive linemen in the game. Harrison and Woodley are so big. And then the two inside guys are really the speed guys. Timmons and James Ferrier are the runners. So if you're going to run the ball on the Steelers, you're doing it against five defensive linemen types. Runs counter to what most teams do in a 3-4. Mm -hmm. Third and 14. Ryan Breeze will throw, and that's collected at the 48-yard line, but a little short of the first down is Devery Henderson. They're going to spot it at the 48-yard line, about a yard short with a naked eye of a first down, maybe a little shorter than that. Ike Taylor is there with the coverage. Pete Morelli looks over to the sideline, and it's going to be fourth down. And the chant has already started. But, you know, Sean Payton knows what kind of game he's in. You know, here's two of the great offensive minds and players going, and Drew Brees and Sean Payton, and both of us said the same thing to us, that against the Pittsburgh Steelers, a punt is not necessarily a bad thing. You just keep the field position going. They know what kind of game it's going to be, but that's a heck of a concession from those two. Kind of what Brad Stilger said after last week's Minnesota Green Bay game. Horstead's kick, fair catch pull for it. And Antoine Randall takes it at the 10 yard line. About 12 to go, opening half. 3 0 Steelers. with the Giants, Philadelphia, Dallas, and then he got the job here. He wanted the Green Bay job. That was what he wanted. He was, he was sitting in New Orleans ready to be interviewed, but Mike McCarthy got the job in Green Bay. He winds up here, and well, there's a Super Bowl ring.
Worked out all right, didn't it? Pretty good. Ball to the 10-yard line. First down. No gain for Mendon Hill. Well, it's been interesting so far that the Steelers have been unable to get the Saints to quit blitzing, and you wouldn't expect that. Greg Williams loves to bring the blitz, but I think the thing that's hurt them so far is the pass rush is getting there before the receivers are breaking off their hot routes. So basically, Ben is left holding the ball, and the receivers aren't looking. So they're just going to have to speed up the clock in their head a little bit and start breaking those off a little more quickly. Second and ten. And that's caught by Wallace over the middle at the 30-yard line, running down the hash mark. Mike Wallace with the catch and a gain of 21 yards. I'm going to tell you what, this is a tremendous sign. Right into double coverage. If a speed receiver is willing to catch that ball and take that kind of shot, he is going to have a brilliant future. We have seen a lot of speed receivers over the years not willing to run that route. That was impressive. Nice catch. For the 53-yard touchdown pass last week in their win at Miami. Mendon Hall to the 34. You know, Chris, we look at this game, and it's very important for both teams in, in respect to their divisions. Baltimore right now looking good in the AFC North. They had the bye, so Pittsburgh with a win would stay a game in front of them. Baltimore already has beaten Pittsburgh. And all of a sudden, the Saints, the number one seed last year in the NFC, are in a division where Atlanta is 5 and 2. They had a bye. And Tampa Bay, knocking off Arizona today, is 5 and 2. They could be a game and a half behind both teams if they lose tonight. Second and seven. Almost picked, and that is Malcolm Jenkins coming right in there as the ball was intended for Heinz Ward. They're down. Well, Malcolm Jenkins knows because the blitz is coming that Heinz Ward has to stop. Watch him just sit on this route. He breaks almost before Heinz Ward does and nearly comes up with the interception right there. This blitz now is allowing the defensive backs to cheat and make plays. Three minutes to the half. And that's finally a sack. That's Will Smith, who was piggybacking him, and Ben Snow wasn't going down until the end. Well, this is the old Steelers blitz now. They're going to come all off the edge right here. A little stunt back underneath. And right now for Ben Roethlisberger, he has to feel like he's playing the Pittsburgh Steelers. They're throwing a lot of stuff at Ben Roethlisberger. Remember, without those four weeks, and they said the hardest thing he had to deal with, goal line, short yardage, and those third down plays. And so far, the Saints are taking advantage. And the Saints are going to take a timeout. 236 remaining in the half. They'll get the ball when we come back on a punt. Three to nothing, Pittsburgh. Wednesday night, all new back-to-back -back episodes of Law and Order. First Law and Order SVU with guest star Maria Bello. Followed by Law and Order Los Angeles. That's this Wednesday night. Here's Sepulveda's punt. Lance Moore. Their catch signal. Oh. Ooh, 18-yard line. He had a little Jerome. Here comes Breeze. Tremendous year last year. Tremendous postseason. Leads the NFL in completion percentage, but also in interceptions with 10. So what's the issue? Well, the other day he said, you know what? It's been a hodgepodge. Lack of consistency, execution. Talked to him about four interceptions last week. He said, you know what? I wanted five or six of those throws back. Like any week. They also said they were lucky. They had yep. some bounce the wrong way. I had a guy break the wrong way on a route. You just got to keep firing. Two of them run back to touchdowns by the linebacker. Oh. David Bowens, and that is a 
Plant. Harrison circling around, and that is a facial. Yeah, this gets set up by his tackle, and then you're going to loop back inside. Watch Eason. He's going to come pick off the tackle, and this was something that we saw the Saints offensive line struggle with last week, and obviously that's one you remember if you're a quarterback. Second and 20 as we tick down to the two-minute warning. Saints will have two timeouts on the other side of the two-minute warning. Three-nothing Steelers. Coming up to the halftime show, Packers shut out the Jets at the Meadowlands today. Farmers knocked out of the game in the big win for New England. Shanahan pulls McNabb in the loss to the Lions. Plenty of stuff to talk about on the Toyota halftime show. On second and 20, Reeves going deep and it's intercepted at the 45-yard line by Ike Taylor, who takes the ball back to the 36-yard line. Ike Taylor coming home to Louisiana and making a big play toward the end of the first half. Sure. I'll tell you, Ike Taylor just basically dropped coverage. He was so brilliant on Brandon Marshall last week. He's going to completely ignore the guy on the outside. He's reading Bree's eyes and watch him just cut right in front of this one for the interception. And I tell you, because the Steelers only had one timeout in that situation, a couple of runs, you could milk this clock a little bit, and now you're setting up for a big time play for Ben. Ball to 36. Steelers had to use a timeout on the third and 11 earlier and lost a challenge. So they have one with 150. There's Roethlisberger stepping up. On the move, moving forward, throws, and the pass is incomplete. It was a little underthrown. It was Malcolm Jenkins who was there guarding Antoine Randall L. Well, this is what Roethlisberger does so well. He's going to step up and through the blitz, which is going to buy time for him to work it down the field. And for Malcolm Jenkins, this is just a little lucky. He had no idea where the ball was. It hit him in the back just before he got to Antoine Randall L. Would have been pass interference, but I think it hit him before he got to Randall L. Exactly. Randall L made the mistake. He should have come back for the ball, would have had it on the one. Had there been contact, it would have been pass interference. Second down and 10 from the 36-yard line. And look out, that was Sharp who came across the line. It's an offside, it's a free play, and it's Wallace taking it to the 23-yard line. Here the defense. Penalty be defined. Result of the play is a first down. It's a nice job by Ben to keep that play going. He knew that he had a free shot there, and the double coverage really never got a chance to get there. They were trying to take Mike Wallace out on that side. And Ben said, what the heck, I'm going to get the ball in the hands of my playmaker. I've got a free one. First down from the 23. Roethlisberger throws into traffic and a flag is thrown and Ward is down. He was contacted. He was bracketed. He's going to get up right now. Sharper and Prelo, the two safeties are there. And that may have been helmet Pass to helmet. Pass interference, number 86. Off in. 10 yard penalty remains. First down. They called it on Hines Ward to push off. There we go, running right down the middle of the field right here. And just before this ball is getting there, see if he pushes the air was. He pushes off on Prelo, was not helmet to helmet contact. Just a good hit and an excellent call by the officials. Just a little push off there. Well, you don't see that call often, but it was the appropriate call. Torrance came in at the end on the back side. There's Prelo. Torrance comes in from the back right at the goal line, and that moves the ball back to the 33-yard line. That's the first penalty tonight against the Steelers. First and 20. And the Saints are going to take a timeout. Well, three nothing. You know, you tune in and you go, not much is going on. 
plenty going on for a three nothing game you know well Greg Williams and Dick LeBeau two great defensive coordinators so it's not not totally surprising one comes out of the Buddy Ryan branch and the other one out of that whole zone blitz kind of thing and, and Dick LeBeau so these guys have been going after pretty good tonight you know you talk about Mike Tomlin it's such a funny deal I mean when he got the job in Pittsburgh after Bill Cowher leaves following the the 06 season he came out of nowhere. He's been the defensive coordinator at Minnesota. He's a part of the Tony Dungy tree. Tony, when he was at Tampa Bay, brought Mike to Tampa Bay. Then Tony gets fired, goes to Indianapolis. He wants to bring Mike with him, but Mike was under contract. And he was telling us he can kid about it now. He said, I tried to get John Gruden to fire me, but he wouldn't. And of course, he wound up with a Super Bowl ring the next year when Tampa Bay knocked off Oakland. But looks like the reason that they had to take the time out, Lee Torrance, after that hit, and you can see there was a little bit of helmet to helmet contact there. He ends up getting dazed out of it, and so they really are out of defensive backs and basically had to use one of their timeouts to get him back on the field. And he's out of the game with Sama Young will take his spot. He said Prelo, first and 20. From the 33, and it's batted and incomplete. Will Smith batted it. Well, one thing we've seen more and more of is when you're only rushing three or four guys and you know you're not going to get there, these defensive linemen now know get your hands up. And Will Smith did the job that time coming back around from right here. Doesn't get there working on starts. Just look at the quarterback and go get them. But right now, the New Orleans Saints have five safeties on the field. Now they get Torrance back into the game over he came out for one play. Patrick Robinson has started the game. He got hurt early on. He hasn't been back in. And they're missing the two starting corners to begin with. Second and 20, and the pass is underthrown. Third and long coming up. And this is going to be a really interesting call here defensively. You can play it safe, not wanting to give up the first down, touchdown, all that kind of stuff. Or you can come get them and try and knock them out of field goal range. And if Greg Williams stays true to form, it's going to be the go get them variety. Right now they'd be looking at a 51 yard field goal. But this is an incomplete pass. Third and 20. And Ben buys time, throws, juggles, incomplete, intended for Ward. And it's fourth down now. And don't underplay the significance of not getting that completion because that would have added at least another five, six, seven yards to this field goal. Instead, it's going to be 50 or 51 yards for Jeff Reed, who's thrilled, of course, to be kicking indoors. At home, that's one of the toughest places in the league because of the soft turf and the open end and the wind. And if you miss it, you're going to give the Saints great field position here. And they have one timeout. They get the ball at the 41. 51 yard attempt. Sepulveda so puts it down, and Reed's kick is no good. Now we got a little different story. So another tremendous defensive stand by the Saints. They have the one on the goal line. They have the one after the turnover. You go back to this sequence of plays, and it really was the difference. Cedric Ellis comes inside, makes a huge play, first of all. Danny Clark's going to come in and take out all the interference and keep that one from getting in the end zone. One more time, just like it, and all of a sudden now the Saints in a great position to try and score before the half. They came after a challenge by Sean Payton, or what would have been a touchdown. And that's a eight yard pass. Jeremy Shockey to the 49, getting up to save a timeout to keep it going with the no huddle. Under a minute. Four man rush. Reeves, and that will be hauled in by Henderson. The catch is good at the 37 yard line. 
Well, you can see Lawrence Timmons just reacting a little bit. He was the underneath coverage, really not Ike Taylor's guy. Timmons reacted to the inside receiving just a bit, and it was enough for Drew Brees to get it in there. That was a beautiful throw over the top. The ballet work by Henderson at the end, getting both feet down from the 37. And Brees would done that for another first down of the 25 to Marcus Colston, but there is a flag oh, down. Number 78. 10 yard penalty still first down. And John Stinchcombs just cost him 10 yards. Well, it's just so hard to single block these guys on the outside. And John Stinchcomb that time just basically had to grab Lamar Woodley and take him down. There really wasn't much doubt about it. Comes Woodley off the edge. And Stinchcomb's going to get his arm up over the top. Well, there's a little bit of a slip there, too, but certainly to the official, it looked like it. Harrison, that low center of gravity almost got there as well. First and 20. Look out. Breeze gets whacked as he throws, but he winds up hitting Colston, and he gets to the 20-yard line. Lawrence Timmons came in, and Breeze looked right down the gun barrel and threw a perfect pass for a big first down. How fast is Lawrence Timmons that he can come from that deep and almost make this sack? He just hit the Jets here and then hit Drew Brees, who again dropped it in just over the top. And this has been a masterful drive so far by Brees. 27 yards, they're in field goal range, clearly. Ball at the 20-yard line. One timeout left for them. Brees incomplete. Intended for Jeremy Shockey and Ryan Clark. The safety back there with him, second and ten. And now this has been really the difference so far for Drew Brees this season. Last year in the final two minutes of either half, six touchdowns, two interceptions, the 104 rating. This year, two touchdowns, four interceptions, and just a 52 rating. So these moments in the game have really been the difference to some degree in their season. You saw that graphic uh, January of 02. That was the end of the 01 season. So it's been nine years since this team has been shut out at home in the first half as Liddell Betts takes the ball to the 13-yard line. And the Saints right now letting the clock for the moment run and now they're going to take that last timeout. Timeout. So you have a third down. Take one shot at the end zone or make sure you get out of bounds here. Yeah, it, it's an interesting decision. I think that will take that shot as well. But you know the Steelers have the ability to come up with a sack. The first thing you say to Drew Brees is you cannot take a sack in this situation. But it is what 13 14 yards away so the receivers have to get down the field a bit too and he knows that he's has to work the end zone or work the outside to make sure they can get a clock stoppage because you, you, you can't spike it anyway it's going to be unless you get the first down but chances are uh, are minimal that you can get a spike and get the field goal attempt so you, you go for six so you got to get it out of bounds third and three then they're going to throw it that underneath. So whoa, 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 whoa. Liddell Betts of all things. That was the best drop of the night so far by the Saints. Yep. He catches that ball, and they are not going to get a field goal opportunity. It would have been very dubious. There's no way. They had receivers all over the field, and I don't think 12 seconds you're making that play. You're getting up and spiking the football. That was a big mistake by Breeze, and here you go. Strange call. Now you got Hartley lining up for it. Now they got Chase Daniel. He's the holder. He's also a quarterback. It's fourth down and three, and Tomlin calls a timeout. Timeout, Pittsburgh. <laughs> Third that, and final team timeout. That's a brilliant call. Yep. You know, I mean, seriously, for a young coach, to understand that he can end that right there with a timeout. Right. <laughs> Look at Mike say, yeah, yep. I got him. That's right. Yep. How much fun is he to be around? He's great. And he's sharp his attack, too. I mean, you, you, we knew that when first time we, we met him, the young coach, he's, what is he, 30, 38 years old now. Gets the job when he's 34, celebrates his 35th birthday. 
that year wins the Super Bowl at 36. He, he loves this chess game too. You can see it, that big smile on his face after he called the timeout. You know, you just have to wonder, did they end up doing the Saints a favor? Because now they may get three points and who knows what would have come out of that that other trick play. A lot of stuff we'll never know. Yeah. Especially on this night. 31 yard attempt. Gary Hartley. He's had an interesting spell here in New Orleans and he's able to bang it through. So after the missed 51 yard attempt by Pittsburgh, short field 41 yard line, they begin. Tomlin says, yeah, 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 yeah. I know. And we had our our field goal group in there. They had Chase Daniel, a quarterback, in there. You know what those defensive guys are telling them? You should have let him run the play, man. We were on that. There's no way. They would have gotten nothing out of that one. He said, I know. I called it. I called it. 2011 Pro Bowl fouling is beginning. Send your favorite players to Hawaii for the 2011 Pro Bowl voting online with your mobile phone at NFL.com slash Pro Bowl. You vote, they play. He's not going to play, though. Uh. Have you ever seen so many people in costumes in your life? All over town. They got the Guinness people here, right? This, this right. may end up being the record for the most biggest costume party or whatever it is tonight. What's the methodology to determine that? Uh, you go one, two, three, fifty thousand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would do. What's the old record? <laughs> Five hundred, I think. How lame is that? Eight seconds. Bouncing ball. Scooped by Sanders. Sanders will go out of bounds and the clock will show one second. So one more snap and the teams will retreat to the locker rooms. Ben's got a strong arm. Do you feel like taking this kind of a chance and even one down there or not? I think Ben can get it to the end zone from here, just, but just about. I don't think they're going to do it. One second. Roethlisberger, eight out of 16, 71 yards. Breeze, 14 of 22. 114. No, nah, not quite the Hail Mary formation that <laughs> we've come to know and love. End of the half. No touchdowns, just a pair of field goals. It's 3 3 at the break. So at a halftime show next, first these messages from your local NBC station. here and it was third and goal and watch Jeff Charleston he's going to end up making the play standing up Doug Ligurski then gets a little help from the outside and Roman Harper that forced the Steelers to take the field goal and that's a big reason why we're sitting here at 3 3 now and that's our big snake will first half analysis Drew Brees is going to go to work right off the bat Pittsburgh won the coin toss at the beginning of the game and received and read the kickoff. He missed that 51 yard field goal which gave the Saints the ball at their own 41 yard line and they were able to set up the field goal to tie the game at the end of the opening half. Reed sends it down to Courtney Roby. And Roby with a nice crease. 
And a good run back all the way out to the 44-yard line. As we check in with Andrea Kramer. Andrea. Well, uh, you know how you guys were talking about Mike Tomlin smiling when he took that timeout to uh, fourth the fourth down uh, fake field goal? He said that's because they knew what was coming. They talked about it during the week, knowing that the holder was the backup quarterback. He said he took the timeout anyway. As for Sean Payton, he pointed out to me that both teams were one and seven on third down. I said, how do you get the offense going? He said, we have to stay balanced, can't abandon the run, and their secondary still very beat up. Pat Rapp out for the night. Well, that'll be interesting to see if they can do that, Andrew, because they, they've only run the ball six times and thrown it 22, so they've had no balance to this point, and Reeves will throw it underneath, and he hits Julius Jones, and Jones is able to pick up 14 yards and get a first down. Tell you what, that was a brilliant play on the part of Drew Brees. Lamar Woodley looked like he was off sides. He got off the ball so fast here. He's going to get just a tremendous jump right there, basically before Stenchcomb could even move. And then Brees just stepped up, flipped it outside, picked up a big first down. And the Steelers have yet to allow a touchdown on the opening drive of either half to see Drew Brees a little hint to Colby shot, right? The side armor since Don Drysdale. Chris Ivory. They're using that little short passing game kind of as a as a run game. Those in effect long handoffs, and that's one of the reasons that they've been running the ball so infrequently tonight. Only seven rushes. Well, I tell you, this uh, linebacker for James Ferrier is coming, and Lawrence Timmons is sort of the guy trailing behind, but he's so fast, he's able to make plays that other guys just can't get to. Second down, 10. sideline at the 25 yard line first down yeah, that's just brilliant timing on that one we saw the Packers a week ago struggling on this very play just one on one more sold them enough and just as it was Ike Taylor turning around there the ball was perfectly thrown and that Lance Moore has made up for so much of the loss of Reggie Bush he has been the guy that's been able to win enough one on one battles to keep this offense moving. But that the major controversial two-point conversion in the Super Bowl. Jones! Looking like the Jones who came up with Dallas about six years ago, first down. Now this is one time that looks like Lawrence Timmons, if he had stayed in his gap, might have been able to make this play. He's right here. And he's going to back out of it thinking that Jones is going to go over the top. And that ends up giving Jari Evans just enough time to get up on him and made the play. To the 14. Four man rush. And the nine yard line. And it's Polamano whacking Colston as he makes the catch again a five. Good golly did you see the hit I mean Colston just turns around after he makes this catch this is really a nothing play and pull them all almost killed him. <laughs> I mean when something that big and strong is moving that fast I mean that really that hit should not hurt like that. He gets every ounce out of that 510 207 doesn't he? Man. Second and five. Breeze on a roll. Moore will make the grab and step out of bounds a little bit short of the first down. And we're seeing Drew Breeze adjusting a little bit. We're seeing them move the pocket a little bit, not sitting in one spot. They're doing some of these little move plays so that you don't get Harrison and Woodley and Timmons and Ferrier knowing where the quarterback is and typically the Steelers love that double inside backer blitz to try and move Breeze off the spot and what the Saints are responding with is going ahead and moving him anyway. Third and one go with that. The two big backs here with Evans setting up as the fullback. You got Betts as the tailback play fake. Pass caught one handed by Heath Evans for a first down. And goal. Well, who needs 
Reggie Bush when you have a fullback that can make a catch like this. Pretty nice. Keith Evans out there. You know, Bill Walsh used to love fullbacks that can catch because you go out and you fake the block that time on James Harrison. Just slip out in the flat. Big play in the game. Chris Ivory back in. There's Bush along the sidelines. Opening drive, third quarter, first and goal. Stuffing the middle. He's done that a few times. Oh, in his baby, what a call you just made on that one. Casey Hampton, the lone remaining defensive lineman, that time was passing out lessons to Jonathan Goodwin. Watch this. Oh, it was Jari Evans he ended up getting. Took Jari Evans right into Chris Ivory. That was some defensive play. Space Eater comes out here on second and goal. to the end zone he had a flag Polamalu reached up pass intended for Moore you saw him shake his head going you bet Even Mike Tomlin knew that one pass interference number 43 of the defense the penalty occurred in the end zone by rule the ball be played on the one yard line automatic first down Polamalu is going to get his arm wrapped around Lance Moore and turn him. See the arm wrap and then pull that arm back. An easy call for the officials. Remember, every official is looking at one of these receivers. So all five eligible receivers has an official assigned to him. They don't miss much. Chris Ivory is the back. And Breeze will throw it too high. Intended for Streve on a tackle eligible play the outside he lined up outside and he can't hold it in 6 7 320 but he needed to be about 6 11. Well Streve has to block first and then he gets the opportunity of a lifetime for an offensive lineman but he ends up stumbling out of it and just keeps, just can't quite turn around and make the play. Oh he's got to be sick that was yep. his big chance. Second and goal. Ivory. Uh -uh. And that's knifing in Chris Holt, who's the backup to Casey Hampton. Ninth year in the league out of BYU. They spot him in certain situations. Good spot right here. Third and goal. Another big time play by a nose tackle. And right over here, the guy right next to him, Carl Nix, just couldn't quite get the cutoff block. And I tell you, for nose tackles to make those kinds of plays on the goal line gives your defense a chance. And we've got a big play right here. Third down goal. And a 3-3 three, three cut early in the third. Inside handoff. Swinging and getting nowhere is Liddell Betts. And that's Timmons and Harris. Into a right there, and the Saints are going to have to settle for three. Well, the double A blitz here, they're going to right, right up the middle, but watch the speed of Timmons. He is blocked, and he's going to get off and run this thing down. I mean, he's basically two or three steps behind Liddell Betts, but there was nowhere to go because James Harrison closed the door on the outside. 23 yard field goal attempt for Hartley. Daniel puts it down. And for the first time in the game, the Saints take the lead by three. Six three. Hey, Leno this week to my show. He will be hosting Janet Jackson and Hathaway. James Franco and Terry Bradshaw will be there. The tonight show with Jay Leno. Weeknights this week. NBC. Terry? My man. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. I've, I've had some funny people in my life. <laughs> I laugh every week. Five yards deep, Emmanuel Sanders. And Sanders still going. Loses the ball at the 35-yard line in the big scramble at the 40. And he gets away with it because Pittsburgh is going to wind up with it. So Sanders, who fumbled the opening kickoff last week, 
and he's just trying to make a little too much out of it. Well, they tried to strip the first one there, and they didn't get it out, but they moved it just enough. Lee Torrance is going to get his hand on that thing and just started the movement. Sigh of relief on the Pittsburgh end, especially by Sanders. Easter meets Halloween in New Orleans. Six to three. Jeez. There's a guy, I couldn't tell whether he was Elvis or Roy Orbison. <laughs> From the 40. After Hargrove forced the fumble, but Isaac Redman recovered to save the bacon for Sanders. And they have a short Mendenhall going nowhere. The one guy we've certainly been watching tonight, Marquise Pouncey, and I was talking to Bruce Aarons. Aarons, the offensive coordinator for the Steelers. They said this young man has been so impressive as a leader on our football team. I really believe if we took a revote, they would vote this rookie as one of the captains of the team. He has been nothing but sensational, worked so hard in practice, never gives up on a play. What a great pickup for the Steelers. Well, he's going to have to work with a new right tackle in a minute because you've got Flozell Adams, who left last week's game against Miami with an ankle injury, and he's down being attended to injury timeout. Flozell Adams trying to walk off the ankle injury. 12 years with Dallas comes over here. You've got Jonathan Scott, number 72, five year veteran, who replaces him on the right side. And Roethlisberger has time. Pump faking, still has time. Slides and then makes the pass to Antoine Randall Hill, who takes it out to the 49 yard line. It'll be third down and one. He could have had a basket full of beignets on that one. He sat back there pump faking. He had to pump fake that thing at least three or four times. And, of course, Ben's famous for this. You know, he's got that huge hand, and he tries to move the defense around. And you can see the defensive lineman trying to jump up, and he's just going to sit there and direct traffic for a little while. Third down one. Redmond is the running back. He's their short yardage guy. Can he get the one? He can, and more, and bounces his way to the 46 yard line. And again, no big story when Heinz Ward makes a block. He's only made about a thousand of them in his career. He yeah, has a pretty impressive double team there. It's always fun to watch these two big guys go at it here. Watch, they're supposed to take their guy. You only need a yard. Just take him and put him on his back and you pick up first downs. Nice job by Chris Kamalatu and Max Starks. Ward took Harper out of the play. From the 46. Ben sliding. Flag is down. And Ben is down at the 39-yard line. Holding. Number 72 offense. 10-yard penalty. Go first down. Well, that's Jonathan Scott, and he's the guy who came in for Adams. And remember, they got Adams because Willie Cologne was going to be their right tackle, and he's a good one, but he's on injured reserve. Well, and really the strength of Jonathan Scott is his quick feet, but that time he got beat on an inside move by Alex Brown. And going to come right over here. And you're going to see his arm is just he's going to stick it straight up in the air and sort of hook it around his head. That time the Saints though did what they want. They don't mind Ben scrambling if he goes left. But they say he is absolutely deadly moving to his right. On a first and 20. Inside handoff, gets a yard or two. Mendenhall, Scott Shanley making the tackle. Five and a half remaining in the third. Saints defense and Arizona, they lost. They allowed one at Tampa Bay in the most complete game this team played this year. They allowed one last week. Only one. So the problem's been the offense with all of the turnovers. The defense has been holding up 
It's in. Uh, the, deep, the offense has actually given up four touchdowns in the last three games. The defense only three. And there's the fake to Sanders and through the hands of Mendenhall. And Harper is right there. And that might have been six. Well, one of the problems that you have is there are so many guys around the line of scrimmage now for the Saints. They're either bluffing the blitz or actually coming on the blitz that even a screen pass, there's nowhere to go. I mean, there's seven, eight guys spread across that line of scrimmage. They fake the little ghost coming around and try the screen, and nothing really has been working so far for the Steelers. Good night to fake a ghost. Yeah. Third and 17. I hate it when they burn these timeouts, too. Yeah. Just come back to haunt you. 459 left. Third quarter. 6 3. New Orleans. Next Sunday night, America's Game of the Week on Sunday Night Football. Back we go to Lambeau Field. We were there last week for a beauty. Dallas comes in. Football night starts at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Plenty to talk about next week on both ends. Green Bay wins today, big game in New York. And what about them Cowboys? Yikes. Third and 17 from the 47 yard line. And that'll be caught by Randall breaking the tackle, but it'll be stopped at the 40 yard line. Four yards short of the first down. Boy, I tell you, that was almost one of those they break out of there. They're basically going to give you this pass. They're going to blitz, give you the hot read, go make the tackle in the first down. I say go make the tackle. He almost got out of that one. Well, they're going to line up to go for it anyway. We'll see if they do from the 40 on fourth down and four. This is where they gave the ball back to New Orleans at the end of the half when Reed missed the field goal. And they will go for it. And that pass is incomplete at the 29-yard line. Sanders wants a flag, gets none. And again, good field position coming the other way for the Saints. He stole it. by three. He stole a touchdown from Hines Ward. His own man stole a touchdown. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Verizon, the official wireless service provider of the NFL by Mercedes-Benz. Experience truly great engineering today at your authorized dealer. By Geico, 15 minutes could save you 50% on car insurance. And by McDonald's, I'm loving it. Sugar, sugar, sugar. I don't think Ben Roethlisberger is loving this one, though. He's going to have a crowd here, and then Heinz Ward out and up. And Emmanuel Sanders is making a play. I mean, you know, it's fourth down. you got to go try for the ball, but watch this. Going to fall right into Heinz Ward's hands. He's going to walk in for the touchdown because Pearson Prelo fell down on the play, and Roethlisberger can't believe it. From the 41. Check it down. That's short game. Timmons makes the tackle. Big hits. There have been plenty of them, and I tell you, there's a lot of blitzing going on. This is one of those games, Al, that it's exciting because of the style of defensive play. They're not sitting back and, and playing some defenses. Both of these defenses have been blitzing and tacking, and special teams have been great. It's been fun to watch. And again, the significance of this game can't be lost on either team the way these division races are going. And that's a good open field tackle made by Ike Taylor on Robert Meacham. You want to know why Dick LeBeau loves Ike Taylor? You just saw it. He thinks he is perhaps the best tackling cornerback that there is in the game. Are there guys that may be able to cover better? Whatever. In Pittsburgh, if you can't tackle, you can't play. And there you go, just one-on-one -on -one against a very talented, speedy young receiver. Meacham on the outside. Get him right on the ground for a gain of one. Local guy, Taylor played his college football in Louisiana. Lafayette, third down and nine. Three's 
Williams gets contacted. The slip gets it away, and that's a first down. McFadden can only put his hands to his helmet after Meacher was able to make the catch on a third and nine for a first down. I tell you, sometimes the most dangerous play when you play Pittsburgh is running into another Pittsburgh Steeler. Watch these two guys. Breeze is going to step up, and the Steelers guys are going to almost kill each other. I, you know, that last second little get up in the pocket not only saved him, but put a good shot on the Steelers. Julius Jones is the running back on first down. Jones gets the toss, then to Colston. Colston looks to throw. And then he'll slide to a halt at the 44-yard line in trouble grasping the football. And he had Robert Meacham going very deep. Yeah, and Meacham was trying to sell it slowly going down the middle of the field. You'll see him in a second here. But really neither safety for the Steelers bit. Ryan Clark and Troy Polamalo just stayed back and Meacham was kind of jogging down there and Colston said I need somewhere to go with this thing. So he took off and ran and really made a decent play out of it. Fifth year in the league for Colston, but he's never thrown a pass in a game. Still has second and nine. The significance of this game, Pittsburgh, in that very tough AFC North, and of course Baltimore figures to be there all the way. Early December, we'll have a Sunday night game, Pittsburgh at Baltimore. So the Steelers trying to stay on top, and then New Orleans, all of a sudden, in their division, Atlanta five and two, Tampa Bay beats Arizona on the road today. They're five and two, and the Saints are trying to not fall a game and a half behind, and they've already lost to Atlanta. They beat Tampa Bay when they faced them a couple of weeks ago. Third and five. And Breeze will convert again. Another big third down play. And Shockey looks over at Palomano and says, gotcha this time. <laughs> or something like that. That was a good move by Shockey right off the ball. Watch this one. He's going to give him a little jukey jukey. Beat him inside. Get his hands off of him. Not too often you can beat Polamalu one on one with a tight end. Big time play there. Going no shock, he probably come to get a haircut. <laughs> it's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. So 15 minutes left in regulation as the teams change ends. Touchdownless game after three, six to three. Saints and DC's Sunday night football resumes. Coverage brought to you by Geico. That's really, that's just a, a wonderful shot. I mean, you think about what happened here five years ago and the devastation and the people come back or whatever, and then to see it all lit up on this Halloween night is a thing of beauty. Congratulations to all. Fourth quarter, Al Michaels, Chris Collins, Worth, and Andrew Kramer. And it begins with a pass to Marcus Colston. And Bryant McFadden is there to make the tackle. Six to three, New Orleans on top, starting the fourth. Well, for Ben Roethlisberger, you know it's been a bit of a frustrating night. He played awfully well, a quarterback rating, a combined 122, which is really off the charts his first two games back. But this Saints defense has just simply been on a roll the last three and three quarters games now. It was Breeze, that completion percentage is excellent, but a lot of the stuff underneath. Here's Jones. He gets taken back. Clark is the first guy to hit him, and then Eason finishes him off. It'll be third and one. Well, the last man standing inside has been Casey Hampton, the nose tackle, and he has been trying to fill the shoes of everybody here tonight. It's up that gap, and for a guy that big to be that fast, always oh, a little startling. He's working hard out there, isn't he? 135 games, most among active nose. Tenth year in the league. Number one pick out of Texas in 01. Third and one. And through the middle, Liddell Betts chugs ahead to move the chains. Well, he 
talked about the double team on the part of the Steelers that time Jari Evans and Jonathan Stitchcomb return the favor again short yardage you just take one guy and you drive them right out of there with these two guys not a lot but it's enough to move the sticks and pretty significant moment here if the Steelers want to hang in this game they need to be able to keep the Saints out of the end zone here points are tough tonight keep it to a one possession game on a night like this from the 15 yard line Reeves throws turning making the catch and is he in or not yes he's in touchdown Marcus Colston Late move inside by McFadden. That shows man coverage, and Colston was able to get the back shoulder throw perfectly executed. That late jump inside let Drew Brees know he was going to have one-on-one -on -one man coverage and almost no possibility with a throw that good that you're going to be able to stop that. Officials checking with each other. Make sure he got it not only across the goal line, but was in bounds when he did it. for the point after first touchdown of the game and the conversion to make it a 13 to 3 New Orleans lead with 1255 in the fourth next Sunday night with pride on the line let's win and leave it all on the field can America's team reignite their season when they head to Title Town? Don't miss America's Game of the Week next Sunday night, only on NBC. Thursday night, night of comedy on NBC Community 30 Rock. You've got a special christening coming up on the office and outsource to wrap up the night. Comedy Thursday, right here on NBC. Halloween night, New Orleans party going on and they hope to be parting after the game with a W up by 10 the home team bouncing ball field the 14 yard line Isaac Redmond brings it back out to the 33 very infrequently will you see a coach a head coach of a team facing a guy he played with in college but that is the case here tonight Darren Sharper for so many years at Minnesota now here there was Tomlin and William and Mary between 90 and 94 and Sharper's a couple of years younger he played for William and Mary 93 to 96 in fact when they were recruiting Sharper and he made his recruiting visit to William and Mary it was Tomlin who hosted him so we with Lee Torrance right now down on the the field an injury timeout here for the Saints. Lee Torrance looked like a guy who got the wind knocked out of him, so he's all right. He gets up, has to sit out one play. Meanwhile, on the other side, there's Pozell Adams. We saw him come out with the ankle injury earlier. He's back in at right tackle. And at the 32 yard line, it's first down for the Pittsburgh Steelers. 1249 to go. We'll begin with a pass good for nine yards to match speed. You know what's interesting, Al, is that this is a team that has been historically really good in the no huddle, but because of all the time that Ben Roethlisberger missed, they came out and did it a little bit last week in the game against Miami and really had trouble with the aspect of it because they had not heard Ben run that no huddle offense. Second and one. And that's Ward. And he takes it to the 47 yard line. Look, New Orleans has been playing great defense. It's been the offense that's been the problem. And they're proving they're proving that tonight. And they've done a tremendous job against a team like Pittsburgh that's a little more balanced than people think. Yeah, and Ben Roethlisberger is going to have to pull off a little magic here. 21 times he's led comebacks in the fourth quarter or overtime. Only Peyton Manning has more during this stretch of his career, so he's used to this situation. Led one last week against Miami. To the outside of Wallace. And there's 
Wallace fighting his way inside the 40 yard line for a gain of nine. So once again, they set up a second down and short. Well, the one thing that has to be frustrating for Ben Roethlisberger is he can't get his big play guy going down the field. The Saints have done a nice job taking away the deep throws, so they're just going to turn around and give it to Mike Wallace underneath, see if he can't suck a little coverage up the field, and then work in behind him. Second and one, the ball is at the 38-yard line. Benton Hall, he's got room, he's inside the 30, the 20, down the sideline he goes, touchdown Steelers. So they set up that second and one, giving him the options. They run it to the outside. That's 38 yards. And on the outside, David Johnson, one of the tight ends, with a nice block. I tell you, these two guys have been doing it so long. Watch Heath Miller inside, and then you're going to see Polamalu come over with the kick out, and David Johnson, a huge block. That play could not be any more perfectly blocked. It is very seldom in the NFL you see a guy go that far untouched. Johnson, the number three tight end, lining up as the offset fullback on that play. Feeling his man to the inside. Reed puts it through. So the New Orleans touchdown is answered by a Pittsburgh touchdown. And once again, it's a three-point game. Saints on top. Sunday Night Football being brought to you by Vicks NyQuil, multi-symptom cold relief for a great night's sleep by Sprint, the Now Network, by BMW, the ultimate driving machine, and by Allstate, dollar for dollar, nobody protects you like Allstate. Frank N. Stein. The rest of them we don't know. <laughs> They're related, we're not sure. 13 to 10. New Orleans, they get the ball here. Courtney Roby feels the kickoff. 30 yard line, and flag is down here. Take a look at the touchdown again in a minute. Pete Morelli. During the return, holding. Number 56 of the receiving team. 10 yard penalty, first down. Jolon Dunbar. Well, this touchdown was just perfect. You had Flozell Adams and Heath Miller with a perfect block out here. Then you've got Heinz Ward coming across in motion. Going to kick out Roman Harper right there. And then you had in the backfield David Johnson with a beautiful drive block. And then watch Heinz Ward in the background. Touchdown. I don't even have to watch that. He's gone. Yep. Like a guy launching a three and turning around before it <laughs> goes through the basket to play defense. Boy, for a team that couldn't get any points on the board, that drive happened fast. From the 20 yard line. That's incomplete. Is there a flag? No, there is not. Marcus Colston covered by Ike Taylor. Hey, Ike Taylor's had a couple of good weeks in a row. He did a nice job on Brandon Marshall and watch him play this thing. Jump inside. May have hooked that arm a little bit, but gonna let him get away with it. He's just swagging. Swagging. Good player. My favorite intro of all time. Ike Taylor swagging. <laughs> Second and ten. And Breeze has it caught at the 23-yard line. That's David Thomas, and he gets taken down right there by Farrier, setting up a third down and five. Well, money play here now. Defensively for the Steelers, this is... The situation that they love to bring a little bit of that zone pressure and we were talking to Drew Brees about it and he was saying you know it's not so much the guys that come down from the safeties like Troy Polamalu it's the guys at the line of scrimmage that drop out that you don't see that it can be so dangerous that you can just throw foolish looking interceptions. Good protection for Brees. Is Robert Meacham. Clark bounces him out of bounds, but not until 
Finally reaches the 26 yard line. That's 50 yards. Every once in a while, Troy Polamalu guesses, and he got caught guessing there. Here he is all the way back. He's going to see the guy down the field. Drew Brees is going to give him a little look inside, watch Polamalu jump. And there it is, wide open, back down the field to Robert Meacham. Exactly what Drew Brees was talking about. He said that you have to be able to take advantage of the fact that Polamalu will guess that time he got him. Longest cast of the year for Meacham, Julius Jones, the running back. Henderson in motion. They take it to him on an end around and give it to the back. They give it to Jones for a gain of a yard or two. I tell you, they might come back and run the reverse the next time. James Harrison's been playing that little ghost play, the fake reverse, pretty well. Watch him right here. But now he's starting to crash down the line of scrimmage. And when you see that defensive end or outside linebacker coming down that way, now your coaches up there in the booth are thinking, maybe time to hit him with the reverse. Second and eight. Breeze by in time. Goes underneath at the 23 yard line to Lance Moore. Well, it wasn't much, but for Lance Moore, <laughs> he just kept working out there. He, he, it was really nothing. They, they had absolutely nothing going, but he did more jukes and fakes in about a five yard area than most people do. He's just, he's really going to be covered. And okay, we, Timmons got him. All right, ignore him. There's a little juke and pick up a little bit and make this third down a little easier. Third and four. Goes out in the slot to cover Meacham. And Breeze is looking left, and Breeze is going to have the ball removed by Brian McFadden. And the Steelers have it. So they sent Harrison out to cover, and they sent McFadden in from the corner to blitz. And Woodley comes up with the recovery. They lull you to sleep, is what they do. All of a sudden, you haven't seen the blitz, and then here they come with a corner blitz and get there. Drew Brees, if you've played against the Steelers enough, you know in those third downs, you have to anticipate that. He held the ball. He stood there too long. It's really on him in that situation to either see it or get rid of it. Second Saint turnover. Ball of the 27. Eight minutes to go. And Ben flushed left and throws off. And that's going to be a first down. Matt Spate, who caught one on the, the previous drive. Well, there's always the question these days in the league. Did McFadden get his hands on the helmet of Drew Brees? A little, maybe. Well, I've seen, seen things that's like that called before. hitting Pearson Prelu a safety and almost killed him. You get a 300 whatever pound guy coming over on a safety. What's this one? Good night. From the 41 second and eight. Chris Kamuatu, who made the block on the safety blitz that saved it. 
But then it was too late because the defense came up big. Keith Miller, the normally sure handed one, has given the ball back to New Orleans and Darren Sharper, a couple of days shy of his 35th birthday. The pop was made by Marvin Mitchell, the linebacker, to create the fumble. He forced it. Now Breeze on first down begins this drive with a pass to the outside. And that's Meacham who gets taken out of bounds in front of the Saints bench. Back to the fumble. Yeah, you see it so many times whenever a guy gets spinning, the ball gets away from his body just fractionally. You can see it just get loose there for a second. Mitchell makes a hit directly on it. That's no accident. The Saints spend a ton of time trying to create turnovers and practicing that. And then there's Darren Sharper, who meant so much to this defense a season ago with those nine turnovers. And Heath Miller can't believe he did it. Under six to play. Second and three. to the 43-yard line. Well, after you hit Drew Brees on a blitz and force him to fumble, his next few throws are going to be quick throws. He's back there now, and he's just getting the ball out of his hands. And for Heath Miller, he knows an opportunity was blown. They were headed the other direction with at least a shot at a field goal if he had held on to that one. And Drew can start thinking about milking the clock, looking ahead. Steelers had to use a timeout on offense earlier, so they have two plus the two minute warning. First and 10 from the 43 yard line. And that is Julius Jones going next to nowhere. Ziggy Hood makes the stop. Well, Ziggy Hood, who's come in, we've talked about him for Aaron Smith. Here's a guy right there. Watch him just play off of an excellent blocker and Jari Evans found his way in there. They're excited about him. They think that he's going to be a good one. Former number one draft pick. Just didn't understand the defense well enough a season ago, but they think he's really ready for this opportunity now. Give the name is Evander. Played his college football in Missouri. Second and nine. Please gets it away. That's caught. And going out of bounds is Devery Henderson. A little short of the first with a flag down. Passer, number 92 to the defense. 15 yards down the automatic first down. That's Harrison. Well, for James Harrison, we talked about outside the pocket. Maybe you get the extra step. When he's inside the pocket, you don't get that extra step. No question, it was a foul. No helmet to helmet. And I'm sure James Harrison's. Worried about everything anymore after getting fined seventy five thousand dollars. He can't believe he did it either. It was though. That was a foul. Got the letter. He thought it was seventy five hundred. Yeah. Missed a zero. Yeah. And then he almost retired. Right. It's a bad zero to miss. Yeah. This is a decimal point in front of it. <laughs> First and ten. The ball is at the twenty. Obviously, still plenty of time here if you can keep the Saints out of the end zone. And a defense that been on the field for a while, but Ben Roethlisberger really has kind of found a little rhythm against the Saints defense. And you got to begin to wonder now that they've been through so many cornerbacks, you get them spread out in sort of an end of game situation. If they can get the ball back, they have to feel pretty good about their chances. So Tomlin catch a little glimpse at that clock. Breeze, of course, real good at milking it all the way down. And in fact, he milked it too much. He has to take a timeout. Their first. Yeah, and remember, the Steelers wasted a timeout as well, so they only have two coming down the stretch. Two plus the two minute warning is going to be second down and nine. Last two series, the. The turnovers breathe at first as they had already moved themselves into field goal position. The 
sack fumble, and then Miller hit by Mitchell, plucked out of the air by Sharper. And that's created this drive right now, which has consumed about three minutes, five plays, and 36 yards. Well, Heath Miller, no questions. Great player had the great block on the touchdown run, but that one does hurt. But for Darren Sharper in this Moreland Saints team, he just has a way of making plays in big moments. Uh, I, I thought he was a definite candidate for defensive MVP a season ago. He was, and then he had surgery, and he was on the PUP list until two weeks ago. And here is David Thomas to the 19-yard line where he's tackled by Lawrence Timmons, and the Steelers are going to take their second time out here. Well, I tell you, it, the one thing that is always impressive when you watch the Steelers, their open field tackling. They get out there in the open field and just they get people on the ground every single time. And James Harrison that time, that was a little bit close to a late hit as well at the end of that play. A little bit on the line on this third down, isn't it? Uh -huh. James Harrison, I don't think, still has recovered from that $75,000 fine that the NFL put on him. He still thinks the receiver ducked on the play. He actually has fans sending money to him to help him pay the fine. He's going to start a foundation with right. him. This is the spot on the field. You see a lot of pick plays. The Steelers like to bring pressure. If you can just get one guy free on man coverage. And they're going to only rush three. Eight back. Pass court. Moore. He gets to the nine yard line and a first down. And now they really put the Steelers between a rock and a hard place after using that timeout. Just one remaining plus the two minute warning and Breeze has a first and goal. Well, you're going to see it coming. There's the pick right there. They just try and clear out a little space. It ends up being a zone defense, but it was clearly what they had in mind. They were going to try and just rub off, give Lance Moore just a little bit of space, and then a catch and run. And that's the old Reggie Bush play, and those are the ones he's been making this year for them. Liddell Betts is the running back. call just when you thought they'd run the ball they take the clock down to the two minute warning away they go over the middle and gutsy catch out watch this he knows you go in there with Troy Polamalu you know what's coming you're going to take one right in the chops holds on to the football what a monster couple of plays for Lance Moore in the second half Drew Brees is 20 of 22 for the extra point. Well, if it was one sort of weak link in that great Pittsburgh defense, it was past defense. 20 to 10 to Orleans. In the league makes more gutsy calls than Sean Payne. We all know about the onside kick, second half Super Bowl. But to make that call, if they had run a running play on a first and goal, the clock would have been inside 240. So they would have forced Pittsburgh to use a timeout and take it to the two-minute warning. Instead, on first and goal, back goes Breeze and threads it for a touchdown. Yeah, and Malo got a great job, but just wasn't enough time for him to get there. I tell you, I really have grown to really appreciate this Lance Moore. Not only is his quickness made up for so much of the loss of Reggie Bush, but that kind of courage going in over the middle against big hard-hitting safeties. Pretty special stuff. Thomas Moore said to kick off, and he was the guy in the Super Bowl. He kicked off on that uh, just side kick and he's got the better leg so that's why they put him in here to send it deep as he does four yards into the end zone. Sanders and Emmanuel comes back down to the 22 yard line of two and a half remaining. 
You know, but Al, really, plenty of time. You go down, you're down 10, you need a score, and it doesn't really matter which order it comes in. You can take a field goal because you're going to have to onside kick. Hail Mary probably anyway, so sometimes there's a little strategy maybe to taking your shot at the field goal and then throwing a few in there if you recover the onside. And along the way, they've got that one timeout and the two-minute warning. Right now, there's a 21-yard line on first down. Pressure on and sacked him at the seven yard line, Jonathan Vilma. And it's almost like it doesn't matter what the game situation is, they're just going to bring the house. It, it doesn't matter what the game situation is. Watch this you're going to have coverage right here on the back. And as soon as he sees Mavaldi more block, then I mean, Jonathan Vilma comes and comes up with a big sack. And for Ben, he needed to get that one out of there. 12 yard sack, second to 22. Final play before the two minute warning. Miller to the 23 yard line. And that takes us to the two minute warning with 156 remaining. And a third and eight coming up. 20 to 10 in favor of the reigning Super Bowl champs. Sunday night revenge. Rogers into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Barr pulls it yeah. back and then he throws an interception again. And that's the way it ends for Farr and Lambeau. Next week, the Packers can take another Lambeau leap in the NFC. But Rogers beware. The boys are coming with prime time pressure on Sunday night football. That's next week and tonight after this game, Andrew will have an interview with the star stars of the game. Bob Tony and Mike Folio will wrap up the game and other things NFL. And we'll look ahead of that game next week at Lambeau Field. You know, Al, the Saints have been blitzing so much. It'll be interesting here if the Steelers set up some sort of a pick play. So if they blitz and play man coverage, maybe you can have one of those catch and run kind of plays for something big. To it. They call on a third down and eight. They sent five. And you get a flag down, and for the moment, you got Sanders making the catch, and that would move the change, but we'll see about the call. Illegal contact, defense, the penalty would be declined. Result of the play is a first down. First down regardless. Well, really, the, if anything, it was Emmanuel Sanders who initiated the yeah. contact. That was a pretty strange call. But here we go. Steelers, Steelers take it. Yep. Yeah. First and ten. One time out. Again, they can get his points in any combination. Three and seven, seven and three. And throws is intercepted at the 50-yard line. Lee Torrance to the 31-yard line. So Torrance getting to play more tonight because of the injuries, and he's been out a couple of times with his own injuries during the course of the game. Picks a pretty good time for career interception number one. Well, once again, Greg Williams bringing all kinds of heat. And Ben Roethlisberger steps up and is going to hit this one, but he just can't get enough on the throw and allows Torrance to come underneath and make a play. And now I cannot say enough about the job that this secondary has done in this game. One cornerback left on the roster, and they have simply been sensational all night long, basically playing with a pack filled, filled with safeties. Lee Torrance has played 53 games in the National Football League. Pretty good time for that first pick. They released him, and then they re-signed him, and now Roethlisberger will take a knee. Pittsburgh has a timeout, but they can go home with this one. 
Well, and it's a massive one. There, there's no doubt about it for the New Orleans Saints in a division with Atlanta and Tampa already there with five wins to pick up their fifth in this one you, against a team like the Steelers. I mean, the Steelers came in. I think if you took a poll, most people would have picked the Pittsburgh Steelers as the best team in the NFL, and you just cannot underestimate this win. And it's a win in, in, in so many ways. It is so big because you avoid going to four and four. You avoid being a game and a half back of two teams. And looking ahead now to the Saints' upcoming schedule at Carolina, they'll be favored. By week, get healthy. Seattle comes in here, they'll be favored. At Dallas, who in the world knows what's going on there right now? At Cincinnati, St. Louis here. So that's not it's not bad the way that sets up. And then when they get to December at Baltimore and at Atlanta, that's tough. Well, and you know what's so strange about this season is that six of the eight division leaders now from a season ago are in third or fourth place. So basically this entire NFL season has been flipped upside down. Big, big, big Halloween night win for the Saints. Two of the great young coaches in the league. Two of the great quarterbacks in the league. And you know I have to say that Ben's absence and maybe lack of practice time against all that pressure all those blitzes that they saw from the Saints tonight maybe was a little factor. 20 to 10. Saints won it. Andrea coming up with an interview and the gang all here for the Gillette Post Game Report after these messages from your local NBC station. Welcome to the Gillette Fusion Pro Glide Post Game Report. Here now, Bob Costas. Groping a bit after a bad home loss to the Browns, undermanned because of injuries, the Saints pull it together and treat their fans to a 20 to 10 win over the Steelers on Halloween night in New Orleans. Drew Brees had 34 completions tonight. That happens to be the most completions against the Pittsburgh defense since Rich Gannon, then with the Raiders, had 43 of them eight years ago, back in 2002. Along with Darren Sharper, Drew Brees is on the field with Andrew. Thank you very much, Bob. Drew, you guys said last week the loss was humiliating. You had to do some soul searching. What did you learn about your team tonight? Well, we have a special group. Um, I think we all knew that from the start. We just had to come out and prove it. Uh, you know, we stuck together. Uh, you know, it's it's it, it's a long season. It's a marathon. You're gonna have your ups and downs. Uh, hopefully, we're we're on our way to, to going upward now. What was the difference in your performance from the first half to the second half? It was the efficient Drew Brees the second half that we recall from last year. Yeah, you know, I think it was just early on. It was extremely physical. Both defenses uh, playing very very well. Uh, it was really just a matter of, you know, kind of getting some tempo and rhythm back and establishing, uh, you know, some first downs and, and just getting things going. And we were able to do that in the second half with a couple big drives. How hard hitting and intense was this game? It was, it was very much that way. And anytime you play the Pittsburgh Steelers, a Dick LeBeau defense, uh, you know, with that group of guys, you know it's going to be fast and physical, and it was. All right, Drew, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. Darren Sharper, why was this defense so opportunistic tonight? You know, you know that's something that we kind of put our hat on is to be an opportunistic defense. Find a way to take the ball away. We haven't been as productive as we did last year doing that. And that's something we concentrate on each and every day in practice. And uh, today was just one of those games in which the, the ball bounced our way. What was it like playing with a secondary that was so depleted, basically down to one cornerback? It shows you the character of our guys. Uh, we got a philosophy, next man up. And we had to deal with that a lot this season. But uh, we got a lot of good players. We have good depth in our secondary. And everyone that stepped in played extremely well. You saw Lee Torrance at the end make the game ceiling interception. Uh, and he's like a guy that stepped in and filled the void when we had an injury. So it just shows you that whoever's up, they have to go in there and play like a starter. There had been so much talk about the Steelers' number one ranked defense and the Steelers' number one ranked run defense. What statement did your defense make tonight? You know what? We, we took it as a challenge. Uh, we said before the game that whoever plays the best on defense is going to win this game. And uh, started my man Mike Tomlin, but I think our defense played the best today. All right, Darren, thanks a lot. All right. And of course, Bob Sharper talking about his old college teammate, Mike Tomlin, and the uh, Saints head to Carolina next week. 
All right, Andrea, thanks very much. Let's hook up now with New York and bring in Tony Dungy. Bad loss last week at home to the Browns. People talking about us, the Saints having the old uh, disease of the Super Bowl hangover, post-Super Bowl hangover. They certainly turned things around, especially defensively tonight. How did they do it? Well, they really did. Uh, Drew Brees got a short passing game going, as you mentioned, with all those completions. But it was really the defense, the red zone defense. They stopped Pittsburgh at the goal line. And then, as Darren Sharper just said, coming up with those takeaways. That's what their defense hadn't done in these last couple of weeks. And they got the big turnovers when they needed them. On another topic, Tony, the Cowboys were taken apart by the Jaguars today.